So, yesterday you got a phone call from a headhunter, and the headhunter offered you a job with a great salary, but you have the suspicion that you're really not going to enjoy working there. Would you take that job? Well, the problem is, how do you find that out? Hi. We are Work for Values and we provide a service that matches your personal set of values with the values of a prospective company. And we do this not just by looking at what the values that the company say they have, but it's values based on what current and past employees in that company say it really is like. So let me tell you a story. This is Leo. Leo is a creative thinker, he's pragmatic, and he whistles. <laughs> but Leo has a dilemma at the moment. He's been offered a really great job. Good salary, big <laughs> uh, perks. But he just doesn't know if the job will fit his set of values. He doesn't know if he'll feel at home working there. So what Leo does is he comes across to our very rough website, um, <laughs> for values, and he fills in a survey. Now what that survey does is it lets us see what his set of values are, and also at the same time lets us see what the set of values of his current and previous employers are, so we can get the data on that to use for, sorry, further on. Now from that, Leo gets a value map. Now that value map shows what to Leo, what's important for him, and the things that aren't really important for him, but might be important for other people. Then we take that value map, and we match it with the value map of the prospective company. So now Leo can see for himself whether he thinks that's a place he wants to work at. It might match him really well, it might not, but that's his choice. Okay. So it turns out in a, a short survey that we did online that 67% of people said they're willing to pay for it. Now, what we're gonna do in our business model is we're going to focus on the first phase which says community. In that phase we're focusing on getting data from the community and we're going to fund that by getting people to pay for it. Um, then from that point once we get to critical mass we're going to be taking that data and be monetizing it through recruitment agencies and possibly HR. So our business model this business model is focused very much on getting that data. So that if we don't have that data, it's not gonna work. If we do, lots of people from recruiting and HR say they're interested. So this is specifically getting the data. The customer segment is job seeker primarily. And the value proposition to them is we give them that value profile that I spoke about. We give them a value comparison with the company they're looking at. And we give them search credit for future searches. In our channel, we're using social media, and we build customer relationships through job alerts from companies that match their set of values. And our revenue streams are the search fee from that customer, as well as later on when we have the data, affiliate commissions from various recruitment agencies and job websites. Then the data acquisition is our key activity, that's what we have to get. Key resources, IT marketing data, and the key partner are professional networks, such as LinkedIn, where we use them to validate that data. So if someone says, gives a review for Microsoft, for example, we need to know that actually worked at Microsoft and they're not just trying to slay them or trying to up the reviews. And the cost structure is promotion and IT. So who are our competition? Well, our primary competition are from companies like uh, Jobtorial and Glassdoor, and they provide reviews on companies as well as things on who's the best employer. Now what we do is we compete in a different segment altogether. That we look at what the values are of those companies and people and who's the best employer for you. So, Leo, we think we found where you we think we found your your perfect match. Turns out to start up. <laughs> <laughs> Where now you can work for values and not just cash.
questions? Keep it. Yeah. Can you remind me how you get the data in, at the first in the beginning? I did not understand how you get the data. Uh, repeat. The, the data in the beginning is a couple of ways. That's the initial value of providing that value map for someone is one thing. We're looking at things where we can allow people to compare. So if I've got my value map, I might want to compare or be interested in how that is different from friends of mine and invite them to get that. That's one of the reasons we've got that future credit for searches. So initially, when we don't have much data, there's not a lot of value in that search for someone. So that's why we're giving them that future search capability. And we'll be honest with them, say, we're getting data in a particular industry. Also, what we're going to look at doing is focusing. So say, software development companies in Brussels. So if we focus on them initially, the sort of level we need to get critical mass is a lot smaller than if we just say, all companies in Belgium. And then from there, it's quicker for us to get that information for them. But that is, that's part of the initial challenge.